Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Green Fuse Burning by Tiffany Morris. This is a novella horror literary fiction from Stelliform Press. It's coming out October 31st, 2023. So I thought it was August 31st, 2023. <laughs> so here is an early, early review for you. It gives you lots of time to buy it. <laughs> I also believe it's on NetGalley this month. I received my copy from the publisher in exchange for a fair review. So thank you very much. It's so pretty. I love the colors. I love the the green it's such a it's a very interesting cover and I'm super super into it I also have a problem and that's whenever I see green fuse burning for some reason I can't stop and I can't stop thinking <laughs> about the CCR song um bad moon rising so I'm always like green fuse burning <laughs> and um yeah I don't know why I felt I had to share that but uh I, I did and there's a bug in my face Anyway, a very short novella about grief, art, and climate change, Green Fuse Burden, is an addictive and vivid depiction of the line from Auden about art, you know, about suffering, they were never wrong. I am not being a pretentious dork here, though I guess I am, you know, in quoting a poem. Auden is my favorite poet, and it's not very often I talk about that. And this book, with its theme of suffering and how others don't realize you're suffering and you're unable to ask for help, really reminded me of that poem. So, what is this book about? After the death of her estranged father, artist Rita struggles with grief and regret. There was so much she wanted to ask him about her, his childhood, their family, and the Mi'kmaq language and culture from which Rita feels disconnected. But when Rita's girlfriend Molly forges an artist residency application on her behalf, winning Rita a week to paint at an isolated cabin, Rita is both furious and intrigued. The residency is located where her father grew up. On the first night at the cabin, Rita wakes to strange sounds. Was that a body being dragged through the woods? When she questions the locals about the cabin's history, they are suspicious and unhelpful. And unhelpful. Ignoring her unease, Rita gives in to dark visions that emanate... There is a not-for-resale thing over this line that I can't read. They emanate from the swamp, I guess. She feels its pull, channeling that energy into art like she's never painted before. But the uncanny visions have become more insistent, more intrusive, and Rita discovers that in the swamp's decay, the end of one life is sometimes the beginning of another. So yes. If you couldn't tell by my initial reaction comments about this novella, I was absolutely entranced by it. It's very short, but for me it worked this time around. Sometimes novellas, you know, feel too short, but this one actually had a great kind of balance. Also, sometimes this type of loner horror, you know, where a person is by themselves in a place and experience weird stuff, goes on too long to be believable, like just leave. But in this one, it happens quite quickly and progresses very quickly. And so it's less horror than unsettling. It's, it's really, really well done. The book, much like Rita, has a lot going on. Rita is dealing with a whole lot of things at once, you know, the death of her father, the loss of her connection to her Micmac roots, the dissolution of her relationship, her struggles with her art, and all of that compiles onto her. Is what she's experiencing real? We're not entirely sure, and that's part of what makes it so engaging. In some coincidence, this is another story I've read this summer where each chapter is introduced by a painting. Each painting is a foreshadowing of what Rita will experience, and not in a way that spoils anything, though. It's, it's almost like a, it's an analysis of the picture while subsequently describing it. And then what happens in the story is related to the picture. It's, it's really interesting. <laughs> Given it's a novella, it's not an in-depth character story, but Rita's goals, problems, and issues are very clear and easy to understand. She's an artsy lesbian, but she's not a stereotypical artsy person, if you know what I mean. I found her realistic and likable. The prose was lovely. The, the descriptions were excellent, and the novella excelled at saying a lot without being verbose or info-dumping. The tone was subdued and foreboding, but not bleak, though it does dip into that territory, you know, in a few instances. It followed and reaffirmed Rita's moods at various times, which helped the, with the atmospheric nature of the story. The novel also addressed quite overtly climate change, discussing how our seasons have changed beyond repair and how that ties into Rita's heritage and all of our connections with nature. I was very on board for that message, <laughs> being an environmentalist myself, so I was like, yeah. Lastly, the novel discusses how suffering and art are often paired, how the best art arguably is that drawn from suffering or that which depicts it. I think back to when I was the most inspired in my own kind of writing, and it definitely came from moments when I used it as an escape, as a way to throw my rage into something, to create something from, you know, a feeling that was not a good one. Of course, you know, she words it far more eloquently than I could. 
In terms of scary, this isn't really a horror, though it has some creepy moments, but it definitely is something that would be great to read around Halloween as it's very atmospheric, as I said. Apparently that's when it comes out anyway. <laughs> Thank you again to the publishers for the R copy. I really appreciate it. It's so pretty. Um, yeah, and uh, I really enjoyed the book. So yeah, you guys should check it out if, if any of that sounds interesting to you.